This is part two of the thing of a new era. And today the topic is nutrition fueling in the new era. Um, for those of you who are joining for the very first time, welcome. And for those who are joining in again for the, for the second time, glad to have you back. Just to reiterate what the purpose of this series is, um, being in this uh, middle of this pandemic, um, for some countries now starting and um, some other countries getting a second wave of it, we've all been affected in so many different ways. And for us as athletes, it's kind of uh, being described as being in uncharted waters. There's no telling what the future will be like in the next couple of months or days. So we just have to take things one day at a time. And in this series, the aim is to engage athletes on the, on the four main topics, being um, identity, nutrition, resilience, and having a growth mindset as we navigate these uncharted waters. And the goal is that the, we will all be empowered, our bodies, our minds, and our spirits will be empowered to take on what lies ahead of us. And hoping that we will have, we will view this um, challenge as an opportunity as opposed to an obstacle. And we'll view it through the lens of faith and hope in despite of everything that is happening so far. So like I, what I've said last week, 2020 isn't the year that needs to be canceled, but the one that really needed to happen for all of us to have the opportunity to reset, um, redefine and reestablish our way forward. So I want to welcome everyone again. Just want to scroll through. We have people from different countries here all across the world. Okay, I'll get to that in a second, but let's um, go ahead and do the opening prayer. So to do the opening prayer for us today, we have an athlete who represents Trinidad and Tobago in the sport of swimming. And she's described as a determined and hardworking individual who has shared her trials and her triumphs in life to motivate and insp inspire people from all walks of life. She inspires them to never give up despite challenging circumstances. Throughout her career so far, she has achieved uh, four, four gold medals at the Youth Para Pan American Games. Um, she's a two-time Paralympian and also a 2021 Paralympic hopeful. So I'm welcoming Chantal Ince to do the opening prayer for us today. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for today. Thank you for each and every one of us gathered on this Zoom call. Lord, I pray that we would, oh God, continue to live in and to grow, especially through this for forum, Lord, of this series of birthing of a new era. Lord, even right now, Lord, I pray that you would continue, oh God, Lord, to touch Cheryl and her team, oh God, Lord, everything that is on the program today, I pray, I pray that it will bless our hearts and even bring transformation to our lives, oh God, moving forward. Continue to have your way today and we give you all honor, glory, and praise as we thank you for all that you have done and all that you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Chantal. And before I introduce our guest speaker today, I want to do three quick activities. All right. Um, really excited about today's session. The first of the activities will be a quick poll. I want to get an idea of where everybody's coming from, the types of people that are on the call today. So if you look on your screen in a second, you will see a question should be coming up. Please don't exit off. Read what's on the screen first, and then I'm asking you to participate, just clicking um, by identifying yourself. If you are a swimmer, coach, or parent. All right, good. I'm seeing that people are seeing, this is looking, that people are seeing um, 
the poll. There is an option if you are neither of, of those categories. So <clears throat> go ahead and participate regardless. Last week, you know it's in the chat, but I figured out a way that <laughs> will be a little simpler for everybody. All right, so just a couple more seconds. All right, good. So 56% of the group are um, swimmers. So I'm glad that we have swimmers here. Oh, I forgot to say that I did leave it multiple choice if there were like parents and swimmers um, tuned in. But anyway, one more question. Uh, where you are tuning in from? This one has two questions. So again, scroll to participate in both questions. Y'all, I'm really not very tech savvy, so I feel quite excited that this is actually working. <laughs> uh, all right, so the numbers are fluctuating, but about 50% just over 50% from Trinidad. We have about 30% from other islands. Some from the USA, welcome. USA, welcome. Um, Jamaica, Venezuela, Barbados. Those are the islands that I am aware of. If there's another island that you're from, I didn't call, you could type it in the chat. And about 60% of you, this is your first time. All right, so glad to have you all. Welcome again. And that is it for the polling. Great. So the second thing, um, quickly, I want to ask somebody to participate here by um, sharing a recap, anything that you remember from the session last week. Anything that you remember from the session last week. What what would you how would you summarize um, last week's session for those of you who were on? Go ahead and click on mute, and if I could get one person to share that. Did we have any athletes on last week that could come on and share any one thing that you remember from last week? Let's throw this into the mix. There's a prize to be won. <laughs> I'd like, I'll leave that to the end. Um, oh, y'all are in the chat. Okay, let's see. Y'all are brave enough to unmute and share. Okay. Ooh, we have Venezuela. Oh, that's Aline. Somebody else from Venezuela. I love seeing the Spanish there. Somebody says experiencing failure and being a failure, not the same thing. Yeah, that's a good takeaway. All right, so I'll go ahead and summarize since somebody's brave enough or wants to win the prize. I didn't say what it was as yet, but um, I'll get to that at the end. But last week's session, for those of you who weren't here or didn't get a chance to look at the recording on YouTube, we had Mr. Imran Richards sharing with us last week on our identity and the potential that we have as individuals. So he says that most, many of us have the, the ability and we're created to soar and to fly, to be so much higher in life, but we settle for less. We settle as um, yard fowl or chicken, right? So he encouraged us to assess what our commitments were, what our convictions are in life, the type of thoughts that assess, the type of thoughts that we, we consistently have. And those are the things that really make us who we are. Um, and really having a, an, a good understanding of who you are will really um, empower you in being able to operate in your fullest potential. 
Okay, so let me see the last thing. The last thing is that um, I want to encourage us just for one, about 30 seconds here, especially for the athletes that are on the call to begin to imagine after hearing what you would have heard last week. And if you didn't listen to the recording last week, I encourage you to, um, to go onto YouTube and check that. But to imagine for a second who you want to become in this new era. If there was absolutely nothing to stop you, if you had the power to transform into the person that you would like to be, and that also incorporates the things that you would like to achieve, right? To begin to imagine in this new era, this, this um, juncture that we are in the road, who you would like to become. Um, and I will share for myself some of the things that I would like to become. I, I'm, I'm using the word become really intentionally because I don't want us to get hung up on only the achievements, the things that we want to achieve in the future, but the, becoming the person that, that we can become. Um, and that will incorporate achieving the things that we want to achieve. So for me, some of the things are, um, I do want to become an Olympic medalist, to become a world champion, to become more resilient, to become more confident, um, and to become an even better representer um, of Christ in my um, sphere of influence. So there's so many, that list could be very long or it can be very short, but really begin to think about who you want to become as a young athlete in the coming months, in the coming years, throughout your swim, as it, as it relates to swimming career, your swimming career. You can do this for, apply this to any other area of your life, but at this juncture that we are at, begin to think about who you want to become in this new era. All right, so that's the last of the um, few, the three activities that I wanted to do before introducing the speaker. And today, again, the topic is nutrition, fueling in the new era. And as we continue to reestablish ourselves and readjust our sails, as it were, in these uncharted waters, <clears throat> today the guest speaker will be outlining the importance of nutrition and discuss ways for us to fuel our body for success in swimming and in life in general. And as a bonus, um, she'll be sharing how to boost our immune system, which is really important for us with this um, COVID pandemic around us. So to describe who we have in our midst today, Miss Arlene Sumeko, she hails from the con our neighboring country of Venezuela. And throughout her career, she has consistently and successfully balanced her academic and athletic career. She qualified for her first Olympic Games in 2004 while she was at college at the University of Alabama. And she graduated there with a bachelor of science, two bachelor of science degrees, one in environmental science and the other in food and nutrition. She also became, during that same year, she also became the fastest 50 meter freestyler in the history of Alabama swimming. And she was then inducted into the university's Hall of Fame. She completed her master of science degree in dietetics and nutrition while preparing for her, what was her final Olympic appearance in 2012. And throughout her career, Arlene accomplished many firsts for the country of Venezuela. She was the first Venezuelan female to semi-final at the Olympics and rank among the top 15 in the world. She was the first to win a gold medal at the Pan American Games and break the Pan Am records in the 50 meter freestyle and 100 meter freestyle. She was the first female Venezuelan to compete at three Olympic Games in 2004, 2008, and 2012. Aline is now retired from competitive swimming. I learned that she still does get new water from time to time. And oh. she's in Florida. She's based in Florida, where she now balances her role as a role, sorry, as mother, wife, and nutritionist while keeping her happiness and well-being a priority. 
So at this time, I am welcoming Arlene Sameko to take over the floor. Over to you. Thank you, Cheryl. That was awesome. I actually did not even think about like the, you know, the first, but um, yeah, that whole thing was true. And now, just like you said, I'm a mom, um, a wife, and a nutritionist, but we try to, you know, practice what I preach. So um, here we go. So I'm thankful for your invitation. I really, really, really am. Um, it was awesome to know that you're doing all these series right now, um, these crazy times that we're living. I really enjoy, um, you know, our conversation on Tuesday and preparing for this um, talk. And I really want to, you know, make sure I I touch not only the part where, you know, we talk about this new crazy, you know, stressful times, but also, you know, what, what lies ahead of us and nutrition as a part of life and not only just um, for a moment, but, you know, for forever, because it's the one thing that we do every day more than anything else. Um, we eat three times a day at least, and we, is is a part of us. So I really want to make sure that you guys are, um, you know, getting all the information that I can in this short amount of time. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me see. And let me know if you see it. Make sure that we are good. Can you yeah, see, we it? see it? Yeah, we see it. We're good. Perfect. Okay, so this presentation, actually, I had it if you hear scream, it's my baby, um, but I'll try to talk. Ali, about. let me interject one quick second. Um, if you have any questions throughout the um, presentation, please put them in the chat, and then afterward, I will um, go through them and put them forward to Ali, okay? So go ahead and you feel free to use the chat. Perfect. So... Anyways, like I was saying, um, this presentation was something that I did also for some of the um, USDA athletes, um, tennis players here in the US. And, um, you know, it's something very practical because I think that, you know, talking about nutrition sometimes can get a little bit overwhelming if you're not, you know, a dietitian, if you don't work in that field. Um, things can get very complicated and there's so many information or so much information in the in the web in the online in the google um where you can find a lot of information but for athletes is very tr tricky because at least swimmers which is my you know my expertise um we have different or a very hard schedule all the time so we tend to forget what it is, what nutrition is, and we just go for, you know, just filling up our bellies and just stop the hunger that we have at the moment. But we don't think about um, calories, we don't think about nutrients. And so um, that's something that, you know, as swimmers, we can get away with because we train so hard that we burn all the calories. But do we are really nourishing our bodies? That's the that's the point of you know knowing about basic nutrition here. Okay, so like Cheryl said, I'm Arlene Semeco. Um, I'm going to go a little bit into my accomplishments, but Cheryl kind of spot on everything. Um, I did a bachelor in science in nutrition. Um, and um, environmental science in Alabama. And then I did my master's of science in Florida International University here in Miami. Um, I'm a registered dietitian by the um, American Nutrition and Dietetics Association. And I am a licensed dietitian here in the state of Florida. And I also I'm certified nutritionist by the ISSN, which is the International Society of Sports Nutrition. So, um, 
you know, basically I have expertise in sports nutrition more than anything, but nutrition is so broad that um, I also have done a lot of different things besides sports nutrition. Um, sports accomplishments, Cheryl already mentioned all that. I don't even have to go through this anymore. Um, and experience, like I said, um, I've done a lot of stuff uh, besides sports nutrition. As far as my pre preparation for um, my master's degree, I also work in the clinic or hospitals. And I was working there um, since I graduated in 2013 and all up until last year when my baby was born. I was working at the hospital where you can only, you know, imagine how many different diseases and cases you see. So that's the work of a dietitian, by the way. Um, there is a difference between dietitian and a nutritionist. Dietitian is the one that actually has done the preparation and the, you know, um, we did a 1200 hours internship and sit down for the the te the test the national uh, registration test and all that um but anyways i worked in um coral Springs swim club as a dietitian too um my coach bruno darcy um in got me involved in all the you know dietetics counseling or sports nutrition counseling for um most of the swimmers and and the in the team. Um, I also have worked with um, substance abuse clients and um, and skilled nursing facilities for older adults. And most recently, I started working uh, with NOVA Southeastern University um, as a registered dietitian for the Unicorn Feeding Clinic, which is a clinic disorder um, or a feeding disorder clinic with um, kids of the spectrum and um, feeding disorders in general, which are um, not the same as eating disorders. But, um, and also I started uh, teaching basic nutrition for undergraduates in that um, institution. So let's jump right in. Um, when Cheryl told me about, you know, the series and how um, she wants to get, you know, people to think about the new era and how, you know, we can fuel our bodies with um, nutrition. Um, I, you know, the first thing is what to think about what nutrition is for you. So a lot of people don't think about nutrition as something that they do for, um, you know, nourishing their bodies, like I said before, or um, fighting diseases or anything like that. Some people think that, you know, healthy eating is just tasteless and very boring food that tastes like cardboard and they don't really like, you know, they don't really like talking about, you know, healthy nutrition because they think that, you know, they're just very boring foods. Um, but the way that I think about nutrition is, um, is the way that we help our bodies perform anything that we want it to do. Um, you know, only the living functions um, or breathing, you know, heart beating, um, just basic living functions, um, but also for our daily lives in training, competition as an athlete, um, as a person that works every day, you know, eight to, nine, eight to five, um, we rely on food in every aspect of our life. So um, it's, it's just getting our mindset into that. Just know that nutrition is, you know, is the process of providing the food necessary for health, growth, and development of your body. So like I said, it's nothing like, you know, we're hungry and we just eat a piece of bread. It's hard to think like, okay, this piece of bread is satisfying my hunger, but is it really feeding me the nutrients that I need um, right now? So for athletes, I'm going to just concentrate on athletes right now. Um, nutrition is for energy for performance, nutrients for body functions, like I said before, and to satisfy hunger because, yes, it does satisfy us and it's sometimes, most of the time, something that we do a social activity too. We go out to dinner, we go out for lunch, um, and it's, you know, a way to get... Um, also our social life, um, which is not possible to be done right now because of COVID. But um, 
we do that with our families, with our friends. So nutrition is a very broad concept, but at this point, Point, we w- I want you guys to think about nutrition for performance, nutrition to help your bodies um, accomplish what they want it to do, what you want it to do, um, not only in the water, but outside the water too. So um, also one thing that a lot of people forget is, um, you know, you eat and a lot of athletes um, come to me thinking, you know, what the nutrition or what was the right nutrition for before competition, before training. Um, and that's, you know, a part of it. But another part is to recover your body, to come back stronger and faster the next day. Um, we do nothing if we just perform well in one session and competition or one session and training. If the next day we come back and we, um, we don't, have the energy and we don't perform well. So another aspect of nutrition for athletes is uh, the avoid, uh, avoiding injuries and keeping you healthy in, you know, in general. Um, boosting our immune system, just like Cheryl wants, you know, this time um, with COVID-19 is so to hard thin um, in our lives where we get out of the house and we don't really know if, you know, we're catching the virus some, somewhere. Um, one thing that we can do for sure in our house and for our, for ourselves is to eat healthy to keep our immune system strong so we are less susceptible to get sick. So food is your fuel. Um, we don't, I mean, besides air that we breathe in and out, uh, f- food is exactly what you run on. So there is a lot of things that you can think about when you think about food and one of the things that a lot of people think about is the calories so what are really calories um when you see a product um and you see the label you see that there is you know 200 calories and a lot of people think that you know the more calories the food has the less healthy it is um that's not necessarily true Uh, we can get really good nutrition for some food that are very high in calories. Let's just say avocado. An avocado has a lot of calories compared to, I don't know, um, a cucumber. So, but it does have a lot of nutrients and it does have a lot of good fats. So calculating the amount of energy per gram of food is something that nutritionists or dietitians do to make sure that you are getting the right amount of calories for food or if they're writing a diet for you, um, we calculate these things. This is a little bit more of like the technical or the science part of it, but just for you to have an idea, um, fats are always providing more calories than protein and carbohydrates. So that's why if you eat, you know, I don't know, a small bag of French fries is gonna have way more calories than if you were to eat, you know, a slice of bread. Um, So that's something to think about and something to, you know, kind of like have in the back of your head every time you you are, you know, about to eat something. just make sure that you understand the the sources of nutrients in that food. So, in your your food in general is is um, it consists in three things, three major groups, um, and I'm sure a lot of people know about this. Uh, but when you think about the simple nutrition and basic nutrition for anything, not only performance, but also for general health, for immune support, Um, you need to think about the three main food groups. And those are carbohydrates, protein, and fat. They're very basic. And literally, this is something that probably 99% of you know. Um, But it is important to see what each group actually provides for you in terms of uh, performance and in terms of um, immunity. So carbohydrates should, in ideal world, um, compose 40 to 50 percent of calories. Sometimes for endurance athletes or athletes that do need more energy um, or burn more energy during the day, um, maybe carbohydrates are more than that. 
they can actually go all the way to 60 or 70 percent of the calories that you consume a day depending on your um, status of your training but the purpose for carbohydrates is provide the energy within uh, the body with energy and it is believe it or not the preferred source of um fuel for your brain and muscles so your brain literally lives on carbohydrates um that's why if you get a you know milkshake you get this rush and you feel like your brain is actually working faster or you're working in a more you know targeted or focused way uh, for a short minute, amount of time and we'll talk about that in a minute but um Carbohydrates is something that you burn a lot and you burn the most um, for brain and muscles. So muscles work in a way that is very interesting because they they themselves are uh, a house for um, glycogen, which is one like the main energy source of your your muscles. So it's let's just think about you know. Um, the juice where your muscles feel from or you know feed off of um and there are two types they're simple and complex and i'm not sure um if you know about this but this is the very basic stuff um where they tell you don't eat that cake don't eat that you know the gummy bears that you're you know craving um those are easily digested and or broken down carbohydrates those are the ones that are full of sugar and they do provide energy but they provide a very quick energy um, and just like provides energy also makes you crash later so let's just say i am really really tired and i'm craving um a milky way um candy bar and i eat the milky way and i really get really good energy from it but then probably in an hour or even less, um, that energy just becomes tiredness and I get really, really tired afterwards. That's what is called the sugar rush that you get because your glucose levels go up, but as much as they go up, as fast as they go up, they come down. So those are the calories that we want to avoid as an athlete because those are the calories or the energy that you're not gonna sustain for a long period of time. And unfortunately, if they're not burned, they convert, they're converting to fat. So that's where um, the most dangerous part comes in because you can store this whole, um, a lot of amount of calories as fat, which is not healthy for anyone. The complex carbohydrates are the ones that we want to aim for. So these are the, the carbohydrates that we di digest more slowly, um, the ones that stay in our system the longest uh, because they have more fiber. They're harder for your body to break down. So this is exactly what you aim for when you are doing a balanced diet. Uh, and unfortunately, the majority of these foods are very, you know, they're discarded from, from people because they think they, they taste like cardboard, cardboard, but it's something that, you know, is a taste that is very particular because they are less processed. So the less processed food that you have, the better, um, the more nutrients they'll have for you and the, the better um, a most, more steady um, energy source will be. So these are the, the sources of foods that you are going to feel a good amount of energy for the longest time and not the root sugar rush that you get after you eat a piece of candy. So these are complex carbohydrates. We also have um, proteins, which are another uh, big food group that we need to basically think of as the building blocks for our muscles and bones and um, it promotes a lot of the immune system or it boosts your immune system so um, people don't think about you know eggs and cheese dairy um, chicken anything that you can see here in, your, in this picture um, 
you don't think about that as source of um, good food for your immune system, but it is. Um, the majority of these calories um, are burn very slowly. The majority of these calories are harder to digest for your body than let's just say a piece of or a slice of bread. And that's why this um, protein is so important for you because every single protein, um, there are two different kinds of protein too. There are like the ones that are complete proteins, which, you know, a piece of chicken will have all the amino acids, which are the building blocks that I was talking about before. Um, and beans um, will have also some amino acids, but they won't have all of them. So those are incomplete proteins. Regardless of um, the source of the protein, either whether it is, you know, beans or peas or meats or eggs or nuts, whether is any of those, um, the food or the building blocks that you're providing your body with when you eat protein are directly going to help you with your immune system and your um, muscle growth. So this is where um, recovery um, is so important or, you know, protein for recovery is so important because your body will use these foods to break them down and feed your muscles and bones and immune system to work better. Um, and obviously to recover for the next training session or the next competition. And also we have fats. They're very, very tasty. Um, you know, we, we think about fats as a very bad thing for you. Um, they are good things for you sometimes. So let's just say um, in general, the healthy fats are essential for your body meaning essential, meaning that they are needed for your body functions. Um, a lot of fats actually work as hormone producers and help your body to um, produce your hormones, which are essential for body functions. Um, so anything that you eat that are healthy, um, healthy fats are going to help you promote not only um, great, you know, body functions, but also to protect your organs. Think about um, a insulated, um, kind of like a, like a cooler, like a lunch box where it's insulated. Um, that's the way that fats work in your body too. Uh, they also help, meaning that they're going to cover your, each organ is going to provide better function for your body and for your organs. And they also are going to help you promote um, the absorption of, of a lot of vitamins for your, from the food. Um, anyways, we think about two different, um, two different, uh, um, what's it called? Fats. And one of them is saturated and another one's unsaturated. So we talk about the good and the bad. And the good, uh, the bad ones are the saturated fats. Let's just say that, you know, fried chicken, that um, slice of pizza, all these foods that you see in this picture, which is very, very tasty, they look delicious, they're bad fats. So um, think about, you know, a piece of butter um, or a stick of butter. Uh, the butter in general um, is solid in um, room temperature, and those are the fats that you want to be careful of. Uh, they also are found in meats, let's just say a slice of or a steak. Um, if you buy a steak and you see the marble part of it, um, the white part of it, um, that's the saturated fat in the steak. So those are things that you can um, actually be aware when you see something like that, like when you see a um, piece of steak and determine if it's, you know, a lean piece of steak or a not so lean piece of steak, um, you can see is about the actual um, fat content in it. So dairy products are also um, saturated fats, whole milk, uh, buttercream, hard cheeses, um, coconut and palm oil, there are a lot of people that think, um, and there is um, 
very much evidence that coconut oil is good for you. Um, it is, but it also is a saturated fat. Um, and so, you know, too much of that is actually not beneficial for your body. But it is, it does have different um, properties that will help you, um, you know, it's a good replacement for any other um, like vegetable oil. We have unsaturated fats too. Um, these unsaturated fats are um, the good fats. And if you see the picture here, um, you see these oil right here. Um, those are oil, like let's just say um, canola oil or olive oil. Those are really good oils that you can actually have and um, include in your meals. Um, nuts and nuts, but nut butters, um, fish oils, avocado, salmon, um, nuts in, in general, they all have good fats, which are unsaturated fats. What happens with these fats? The body actually uses this, these fats for, um, like I said, the nervous system, um, the insulation of your organs, the way that your body works with hormone production, um, they're all coming from unsaturated fats. Um, is my camera on, Cheryl? I, yes, I do see you. Can you still see me? It looks like on other people's screen, but your, um, your screen is still being shared. Okay, perfect, okay. Um, perfect. All right, so that's the unsaturated fats are good fats. So what happens with the beverages? Um, we talk about what we have in the plate, right? But we also drink um, beverages. And there are a lot of um, things that you can actually drink out there that um, are marketed as healthy for you where they're really not. So let's just say um, they have calories. In general, they have calories. They some of them do have good nutrient content. Some of them are not good. Um, beverages with added sugars, let's just say like Gatorade, energy drinks, sodas, um, even vitamin waters that are, um, you know, marketed as very healthy um, drinks for you. I mean, if you if you read the label of vitamin water, um, which is a genuine product that you can find in the store just by the name vitamin water you think is a you know water with great amount of vitamins in it and it's going to help you and you know get you um a lot of vitamin content where if you actually read the label um it's very minimal um vitamin content and a lot of sugar so these are kind of drinks that you um you don't think about or they're marketing in a very clever way where you get you to consume a lot of it but also um you will consume in a lot of sugar and a lot of calories that are not really nutrient and uh, nutrition your body so who doesn't like a starbucks frappuccino who doesn't like you know a soda a lot of people like these um products in a daily or drink these products in a daily basis um and so there are a lot of calories in this. And, you know, those people that are like fighting to lose weight and fighting to get healthy, um, those are the little things that you or me as a dietitian will look at also because there are a lot of calories and um, empty calories and empty nutrients in these kind of products. So for a diet to be healthy in its variety, we need to literally eat the rainbow. That when they say, you know, eat all the colors in the rainbow, it is true. You need to go with all the colors in the rainbow in terms of vitamins and, um, I mean, vegetables and fruits. Um, you need to also use moderation. It is okay to eat that, eat that slice of uh, pizza every now and then or that burger every now and then, but moderation is key for any diet. So a lot of diets out there, and there are thousands of diets, um, paleo diet, um, you know, you name it. Um, they are great. They all work. Um, they do work because they cut out 
major um, calories and major um, food groups where you actually get a lot of calories from. Let's just say the paleo diet um, or the keto diet, they cut out a lot of the grains, a lot of the carbohydrates. So these kind of diets do work. Um, you're going to lose the weight that you want to lose. But the point of that is sustaining that balance, that diet for a long time. Um, I, as a dietitian, promote no diet at all. I don't like diets. Um, I don't believe in diets. I believe in healthy eating. So healthy eating for me is based on these three things, variety, variety, moderation, and balance. And the point of that is that you can actually sustain these three things throughout your life, which is the key of having, you know, a good health. So let's just put it in practice. So everything that I was talking about before, let's put it in practice. How does that look for you on a daily basis? So um, the choosemyplayer.gov is a great source um, of information that you can actually use on your daily basis. Um, you can actually get meal plans in this website, which is, you know, um, backed up by science, backed up by, um, the Dietetics Nutrition Association, which is actually something that I use for my clients a lot because it makes you know or it makes you think in a more practical way what to eat. So let's just say, Arlene, hey, I am a, I'm an athlete, I'm a swimmer, I'm a runner, whatever, what have you. Um, I need a diet, you know, to sustain um, all the components that I need for every day, basically all the carbohydrates, protein and fats, all the calories that I need for practice, and um, to make sure that I have a healthy diet in general. So I will tell them, you know, it's easy for me to write down what to eat in each meal, but it's so hard for a person to actually follow that. Um, people in general need to see something graphically like this. So if I tell you, hey, I would like your meal, your meals, breakfast, lunch, lunch and dinner to look like this, um, you will be able to actually get a little more perspective of what to eat in each meal. So for example, if you see right here, um, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Whatever you want to do with these fruits and vegetables, you want to you wanna, um, steam them, you want to eat a a salad, you want to um, eat them raw, whatever you want to do with these fruits and vegetables, you can have them. Um, and then the other half, half of it, meaning a quarter, or almost a quarter of your plate should be protein and the other one grains. What about dairy? Dairy is a very controversial um, food group, let's just say, or, or um, you know, foods that we actually sometimes are avoiding. Um, a lot of people don't like um, drinking cow's milk or they avoid cheeses or yogurt. Um, for a dietitian, this is something um, that we promote in the meaning promote for um, general health. But in specific cases, it might be something that you want to avoid. Um, let's just say, you know, a person that is trying to lose weight, you might want to substitute some of these um, dairy for some, you know, water or lemonade or something like that, that doesn't necessarily involve dairy, whole mil milk, um, or whole fat yogurt. Um, as a dietitian, I will tell you for swimmers or athletes, I will go for the whole, um, whole fat kind of dairy because these are less processed and they're going to contain, yes, they're going to contain some saturated fats, but they're also going to contain the majority of, you know, the nutrients that you need, vitamin D and all that. Um, you can also find that in skim milk and all that, but uh, the problem, for example, for yogurt is that you, if you go for a low fat yogurt, the majority of it, unless you do it plain, the majority is going to be saturated with sugars, which is way more harmful than, let's just say, a um, 
some saturated fats in it. So how does that look like? And these are not my pictures, by the way, but this is exactly how sometimes my, um, the majority of the days um, for my training breakfast look like. Um, it will be, yes, I will have bread, I will have fruits, I will have some good veg, um, good fats um, as an avocado, sometimes peanut butter or almond butter, and a lot of protein. Um, this could also be an omelet. Um, you know, you can have your fruits on the side, you can have your fruits on, you know, um, if you want to toast with a peanut butter and some banana, you can do that. Uh, but this is something like you can think of when you when you see um, something like this, and you know some of them are actually not very hard to do every day. Um, for me right now, my staple of food is oatmeal. I actually eat it pretty much every single day. Um, I put peanut butter on it. I put um, honey sometimes you know it depends on what i'm what i'm in the mood for but this you know these are pictures of meals that you can actually kind of remember and have a graphic whenever you are actually about to cook something um this is an interesting picture i found it because and i wanted to post post it here because um this kind of looks like a fried chicken breast but you can actually find or recipes where you can actually um achieve this texture and this crunchiness with only um a few you know bread crumbs and um bake it so these are things that you can actually think of and you don't have to fry food to get you know that kind of texture and the kind of flavor um this is another picture um this is actually the picture of um what my lunch looked like today this is something that i wanted to think or you guys to think about um when you think about food you don't think about something like this however you can actually assemble a salad where you have you know a bed of um spinach with chicken you have some um onions you have some avocados and then you'll have a handful of nuts um, that's something that you can actually assemble in a different way it doesn't have to look perfectly like this but you'll have you know the point of these pictures is for you to think about that when you actually are assembling your plate um, and not you don't have to be a you know a chef to actually you know get all your food like this looking perfectly but something like that that you can actually think about so what happens in competition um i wanted to talk about a little bit more of um or what my experience was with um training because it's something 